What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear five hour work plans drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Welcome to Stacking Your Team, a show for entrepreneurs who are ready to step into the CEO role of their business by attracting and retaining key talent. Hey there, I'm Natalie Ekdahl, host of the Biz Chicks podcast. Our clients and community are rapidly expanding their businesses and need support as they stack their teams. Your incredible host, Shelly Warren, leverages her background growing and leading teams in multiple organizations, including a Fortune 50 corporation. So are you ready to stack your team? Here's Shelly. Hello, and thanks for joining me. I'm so happy you're here. It's definitely the place to be if you're building an incredible team for your business. Before you hit the beach, hit the hammock, or hit the dock, I want to encourage you to bring a few books along with you. Those hazy, lazy days of summer can be the perfect time for you to step away from your business and step into some fresh perspective for you to consider how you lead and who you lead while your mind is open to it. Today, I'm going to share with you five of my favorite current books written for leaders who lead teams. All of these leaders and authors are alive and well. Many are on book promo tours. They're featured guests on podcasts, and many of them are hitting the stage at big conferences and special events. Stay tuned to the end of the episode where I'll share a bonus book with you. It's full of ideas for activities and games so you can spark some creativity and fun for your next team meeting or team retreat. You know, with so many options out there for learning these days, sometimes the classic way is the best way. A summer day, a comfortable spot, a cool drink, and nowhere else to be, is the perfect time to crack open a book. So if you're a book lover like me, and if you're looking to expand your capabilities as a leader, you'll want to hear this list. Here we go. I've always loved books. And it was a big move for me to actually use a highlighter in a book. (laughs) I would often write notes to tuck into pages or use those cute colored tabs, but it was only a few years ago that I gave myself permission to actually highlight passages in a book. My mother would often borrow my fiction books for me and keep them in a Ziploc bag in order to keep them in the pristine condition they were when I gave them to her to borrow. You know, I still don't lend books. I do, however, buy books for people as gifts. And I like to take books to library, shelters, and thrift stores when I've decided that I'm ready to part with it. Summertime is also the time that I declutter my books and decide which new books I want to buy. In my corporate days, I had a lot of vacation every year. And I mean a lot. And my goal each vacation was to take off my watch, rarely move my car out of the driveway, and fully unplug from all things work-related. My reward for being on vacation was random day trips and books. 
Vacation was all about total quiet time, no responsibilities, and nowhere to be. Driving through country roads at my leisure and often stopping in a great location overlooking water to read. Mmm, sounds so good. It was during one of those summer vacations that I first became aware of an incredible author and speaker, John Maxwell. He's written well over 70 books and is considered to be one of the world's foremost authorities on leadership. His newest book, Leader Shift, The 11 Essential Changes Every Leader Must Embrace, is my first recommendation to you. The reason I chose this book to feature is that I'm often reminding our clients that the majority of the root cause of issues within their team performance is really twofold. One, poor hiring decisions, and two, not teaching our team how to move from thinking like an employee to thinking like a business owner. The CEOs we work with love this concept and are working to teach it and then reward it when they see it. This book could be a great resource to gift to your team or that team member who you see has potential to become a great team leader in your business or to even use as part of training with your team. It can also help you, the CEO, to better understand language and concepts for you yourself to improve upon. John Maxwell's 11 shifts are written for anyone who's ready to do the work it takes to shift their mindset, their behaviors, and their habits over into thinking like a business owner, regardless of their current role or their current pay. If you have team members who are thirsty to become more at work, or if you have a team member who could use some clarity around how they can improve and evolve so they are set to be considered for a raise or promotion to a new role, this book can be the start of their transformation. But as you know, it's not good enough to just hand them the book. You'll want to follow up and talk about it during your touch points and one-to-ones and then be ready to notice any shifts in their actions so you can acknowledge them. A few of the shifts that stood out for me in the book are the improvement shift from team uniformity to team diversity. This chapter is a great foundation to begin the process of understanding your own biases, whether unconscious or not, and then challenging your assumptions and then shifting over into valuing everyone to take advantage of the many perspectives a diverse team can bring to you and your clients. The next shift I thought was really well done is what he calls the reproduction shift from ladder climbing to ladder building. Here, John walks you through the notion that everything isn't about you. It's really all about them. I love this concept because it outlines how you and your team members can help each other achieve their goals and the overall goals of the business while asking yourselves, how they can equip others to be successful. You'll often hear my version of this on podcasts and when I'm working with clients and during strategy sessions when I'll say, what looks like help to you today? It's my way of opening up that one-to-one conversation and making sure that people know that I'm leaning into them, not concerned so much with myself and what I need, but really wanting to hear what really looks like help to you right now. The other favorite shift is from pleasing people to challenging people. It's so good. It's foundational, really. And John reminds us that when we lead people, not everyone is going to like us all the time. And that's okay. Your role as a leader and those who lead your team members is not to make everyone happy and be their buddy buddy and the source of their happiness at work. But instead, as you lead, you'll quickly find out who is committed to the business and who is not. 
There are 11 shifts overall that John covers in his book, and each one is insightful, and it will make us all sit up a bit straighter and lean into our role as leader. My next suggested summer sizzler is Simon Sinek's Leaders Eat Last. And if you are a millennial leader or you have millennials on your team, this is a must read. This book is all about building trust and respect with those you lead. Simon calls it the circle of safety. That's where everyone feels like they belong. And it's the highest form of culture you'll want to create for a thriving team. He walks us through the heavy responsibility of being a leader with encouragement and some reality checks and some clear language to bring his concepts back to basics so we can relate to the stories that he shares with us so we can all learn together. The overall premise of the book is linked to the military practice of officers eating last. This philosophy is mimicked on the battlefield where great leaders sacrifice their interests for the good of those in their care. He really is brilliant and he's so charismatic on stage. I've mentioned Simon before in the podcast. He's um, on the episode, How to Lead Millennials. It's episode number 39 where I talked about his viral YouTube interview, where he gives us all a reality check on how we can better serve and motivate young people in the workplace. That YouTube session of his is just so epic. And so is this book. Once you realize that leadership is really all about building relationships with your team members, you are well on your way. However, just like the John Maxwell book, Simon agrees that building relationships with your team is not about being buddy-buddy with them. I covered this too on episode 52, where Natalie and I talked about, can you be both a leader and a friend for your team? It's a lofty topic with lots of viewpoints to consider, and I've certainly met a lot of small business owners who want to be BFFs with their teams, and it rarely ever works out. I highly recommend you dive into this book. You're probably familiar with Simon's other famous book, Start With Why, How Great Leaders Inspires Everyone to Take Action. And you may remember, this is where you were first introduced to the golden circle and his philosophy that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. That book is another great Simon read. Up next is a book called Radical Candor by Kim Scott. Kim is a tech whiz, and she's also published two novels. In this book, Kim gives us the framework to be more effective and provide solid feedback to our team members so they can thrive. She learned this through her many years working with high-tech brands like Dropbox, Twitter, YouTube, Apple, and Google. She's offering up what she calls the new management philosophy. That includes saying the right thing at the right time with the right tone so that you get the right intention that you wanted in the first place. My favorite thing about this book is Kim's boldness to tell it like it is. There's no topic off topic. And she's not afraid to call out that aggressive leader who needs to realize the humanity within their role or the wimp who needs to buck up and take the responsibilities more seriously. She covers strategies for leading rock stars and mediocre performers with tons of fresh ideas for connecting with both so that you maximize their efforts. She outlines three principles to be a more effective leader. The first one is make it personal. The second one is get stiff done. And uh, that's the P&G rated word. And the other one is understand why it's important. You'll be highlighting and taking pages throughout this book. Next on my best beach books is Patrick Lencioni's The Ideal Team Player. 
I first came across Patrick at LeaderCast Live a few years ago. This is a local conference that I co-chair every year in my hometown. And incidentally, John Maxwell, Simon Sinek, and Patrick, and many more great speakers have been featured on stage at LeaderCast Live. It's a simulcast out of Atlanta with over 700 host sites across North America that's hosted each year in May. So mark your calendars for Thursday, May 7th, 2020, and look for a location near you. Patrick is a fan favorite because he's not only brilliant, but he's a master storyteller and super fun to watch on stage. He just gets so excited about sharing his insight. This year, he shared the three fundamental values every ideal player needs to have in order to be considered to have them join your team and what to do if you made some bad hiring choices and now need to turn that performance around. Patrick has authored many books, and I'm sure you'll remember The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, where he cracked open the conversation about dangerous group behavior. And maybe you've heard his about his other book, Death by Meetings, where he shares a ton of insight on how to improve your team meetings. All of his books, and there have been many, have one thing in common. He loves to share his insight in the form of a fable. His characters play a specific role that we can all relate to. Sometimes we see ourselves, and we certainly see our family, our friends, and coworkers, some bosses, and even some peers in his stories. In his latest book, The Ideal Team Player, Patrick shines the light on individual people who make up a team and shows us the three most important essential virtues of that ideal team player. And here they are. Hungry, humble, and smart. However, don't assume that you know Patrick's definition of those three words. No way. Patrick knows how to take a simple word and flip it up on its head to show you a whole new way of seeing the word, the definition, the behavior, and that personality style. And of course, you know, having three out of three is fantastic, but how many people on your team are three for three? What about two for three? So what's your plan to improve your two out of three? There's a really great quiz that's included in the book that helps you rate the frequency in which your team members live those three essential virtues. It will help you identify who needs coaching, what kinds of coaching, and how best to structure your language to help turn that performance around. Okay, I am sure the next book won't be a surprise for you. Brene Brown's Dare to Lead. She is a phenomenon now. She's Oprah's gal pal, and she's become a verb. That was very Brene of you, can be heard in boardrooms everywhere. Her groundbreaking TED Talk, followed by her book, Daring Greatly, where she made it normal to be vulnerable, followed up now with her Netflix documentary, The Call to Courage, where she encourages us to choose courage over comfort, compliments this book, Dare to Lead, perfectly. My favorite thing about Dare to Lead is Brene's stories about her own team and how they hold her accountable, how they give her tough feedback, and how they stand up for what they think is right. And that includes calling her on her own stuff. She's very willing to talk about her blind spots and her own demons. She's learned how to be relatable as a leader while not coming across as wimpy or needy. She's actually strong, very caring, and open to continually learn more about herself. The section of giving feedback is incredible, and you'll not think about giving feedback the same way ever again. There are also some cameo appearances throughout the book, featuring people you'll recognize and some you may not, but Brene likes to share different points of view to back up her philosophies and her research, 
and to show you a slightly different way of thinking about it. Well, congratulations on making it to the end of this podcast. So I want to give you a bonus book to take to the beach with you. I'm suggesting you take along the book called The Big Book of Team Building Games by John Noonstrom and Edward Scannell. So I don't want to hear it. There's no more excuses for not adding a bit of fun into your team meetings or your team retreats. This book is overflowing with games designed to create camaraderie, team spirit, and fun. Each activity includes a materials list, the intention of the activity, how to do it, so the procedures, and what to do while the activity is going on, and some help in designing some handouts if you want. Many have discussion questions and tips on what to do to enhance the activity if you have more time. The book is broken down by the intended outcomes like coping with change or improving teamwork or energizing team meetings. There are a lot of activities to choose from and most are free to create and super easy using things to, as props that you'd find in your workplace anyways. All of the games and activities are designed for participation and the authors provide a lot of insight on how best to use the games in a light, fun, and effective way, even with people who hate doing these kinds of things. So if you would like some help working through a leadership or a team challenge, or if you'd like to better understand how to structure your team, reach out to me. Let's do a strategy session and get you some clarity and some peace of mind because, well, you'll have a plan. I'm also inviting you to join us in our programs. We have three separate coaching programs for leaders, and I'm sure there'll be one that's a perfect fit for you. Drop me a line at Shelly at bizchicks.com. That's Shelly with an I at B-I-Z-C-H-I-X dot com. I would love to hear about you, your business, and your team. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Stacking Your Team. Please click subscribe in your podcast app so you never miss an episode. And head on over to bizchicks.com slash join to get access to the private Facebook group we host for women entrepreneurs. The group is free to join. And when you do, you get access to the complimentary downloads associated with both of our podcasts. We include the links in our weekly newsletter. No matter where you have come from or where you are going, you are the leader your company needs and you are worthy of being CEO. Stay focused, biz chicks, and go stack your team. Oh, 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 oh,